This is Farm Journal's Margie Fisher. I'm with Brad Butke, one of our presenters here at the 2011 Corn College. Brad, this year you're teaching attendees about variable rate application, and really the foundation for that is creating zone management maps. Uh, what kind of advice, field experience, are you able to teach them? Uh, probably the most important thing is to realize that before a guy moves into a variable rate program, that they're going to need four to six years of collecting data uh, so we can come up with a management zone. So to get a guy to get good calibrated yield maps, uh, use things like soil test maps, soil line maps, um, maybe even uh, remote uh, sensing technology like NDVIs, uh, either from an airplane, satellite, or ground-based sensors. Uh, once we get that information, we can stack it on top of one another and really work at redefining management zones. Uh, here at CropTech, we work uh, with zones based mainly on soil type. So here in Illinois, we've got excellent soils data. Uh, we can use that as the basis of our zones, uh, overlay uh, maps like NDVI and yield maps to refine those zones down to three to seven acres. Once we define those zones, then we can work on uh, doing in-field research, uh, on-farm trials, uh, et cetera, uh, to try to determine which population and nitrogen rates are gonna fit those zones best. You mentioned variable rate population as one stepping stone for a farmer to enter into variable rate. Tell me some of the common obstacles that you've seen farmers encounter as they're stepping into variable rate population. Uh, probably the biggest hurdle, like I said earlier, is coming up with management zones. Uh, once we get those zones established, it really isn't that much work uh, try to, to try to define what rates to put where. So uh, the biggest uh, workload, I guess, either with uh, population or nitrogen, is getting those zones established and understanding how your field's responding to them. And when it comes to nitrogen, uh, equipping your toolbar to do variable rate, there's a lot of new technologies. What's some common advice you're giving farmers if they're looking to enter into that? Uh, the biggest thing is to, uh, today we were able to do a demonstration with some different plumbing techniques on bars. Uh, there's some small things you can do uh, plumbing wise to make a bar uh, better for variable rate than others. So um, depending on what pump and uh, plumbing system you use, uh, you can hit wider rate ranges and wider speed ranges than with other setups. So uh, one of the things that we work with today is the difference between a standard orifice versus uh, an orifice that changes size. So uh, in this case, we're using the Veriflow orifice. So um, with the Veriflows, we were able to hit rates from 20 to uh, 60 gallons per acre. Uh, with our single orifice, we were only able to hit 50 or 60 gallon rates on our demonstration today. So realizing that there's some limitations plumbing wise, not only with, with the technology, but the actual physical plumbing itself that can limit a bar uh, when it comes to variable rate application. Thanks, Brad.